ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Then to continue with Al-Aqeed Al-Tahawiyya The creed compiled by Abu Ja'far Al-Tahawi Rahimahullah with the explanation of Shaykh Salih Al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah. Then the previous two weeks, we had a section with regard, with regard to the Qur'an, and that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah, and so on. And in last week's section, we had points number 48 to 57, which began... وَأَيْقَنُوا أَنَّهُ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بِالْحَقِيقَةِ And they have certainty, I mean the people of the Sunnah have certainty that it, the Qur'an, is the speech of Allah, the Most High, بِالْحَقِيقَةِ In reality, in truth. Then as we saw, then at tahawi he uses the word here when affirming that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah, the Most High, he said, Bil Haqiqa, in reality. Then we had that this was a refutation, this term at the end here was a refutation of which people? Those who say what? As the brother mentioned, it's in refutation of those like the Jahmiyyah and Mu'tazila and those who follow their way, those who say the Qur'an is metaphoric, metaphorically the speech of Allah. Not his speech in reality. So this is in refutation of them. So what, we had the point in the explanation, what do they actually say, these people and these deviants, what do they say that the Qur'an actually is then? What do they say about the Qur'an, these these deviants. Obviously, we take their saying and, and we look into it uh, to some extent as a refutate to refute it and to keep away from it and to be aware of it. So, what do they actually say uh, that the Quran is? Some of them say that um, he's being taken from Allah to Allah who must be the men. While some of them say that it was revealed in something else. And they're saying can be summarized to say that they say the Quran is is what? Created or I don't know. That they say the Quran is created, it's something which Allah created in his creation. And upon that saying of theirs, which is deviation, that the Quran is something created, how do they then go on to affirm that it's it is Allah's speech? How can they then say it's Allah's speech if it's something created? In what, upon their saying, they say it's something created. How can they then agree is it, that it's Allah's speech? Yeah. They say it's an ascription of respect, they say. An idafa, an ascription of respect. They say the book of Allah means a book which Allah has given great respect and honor to. Not that it's actually his speech in reality. <laughs> so in refuting them, Shaykh al-Fawzan, Hafizullah, he mentions a principle in this regard. What's the principle that he mentioned about things which are ascribed to Allah? Things which are ascribed to Allah of how many categories? And what are the two categories? Shaykh al-Fawzan mentioned uh, the important principle that things which are ascribed to Allah are of two categories. The first are those things which are meanings or which are qualities such as seeing and hearing and speech and so on. Then these we affirm for Allah as being attributes of Allah. And he said the second category are objects 
ascribe to Allah, solid objects ascribed to Allah, such as the sheikh of Allah, the house of Allah, and so on, then these things are objects which are ascribed to Allah upon the basis of giving honor to those things, and idafa of tashrif, that they are ascribed to Allah to give honor. Allah gives honor to them by ascribing them to himself. So with regard to the Qur'an, uh, with regard to the speech of Allah, then which did that for, which category was that? The Qur'an being the speech of Allah, which category was that? Yeah. So Allah's, one of Allah's attributes, Allah's speech, is one of his attributes. Contrary to what the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiya say. The speech of Allah is uncreated, the Qur'an is not created what we had the point in the explanation as well that which we've had a number of times before that the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiya and their like who were all covered by the term the Mu'attila those who deny Allah's attributes or some of them they make an excuse for denying these attributes what is the excuse they try and use why, what's their excuse? They say, we, we deny this attribute or or we say it's metaphorical. For what reason? What's their excuse that they use? <coughs> they say that we're fleeing away from making the creator like the creation. For fear that if we affirm for Allah attributes, then they're afraid that these attributes are like the attributes of the creation. So they say, we'll flee, we'll deny these attributes for Allah. So Shaykh al-Fawzan said they fall into something far worse, which is denying his attribute, denying Allah's attributes, and depriving him of his attributes. And Shaykh al-Fawzan said, if only they followed the correct way, they would be safe and sound. The correct way being what in this regard? With regard to affirmation of Allah's attributes, how could, they have, how could they have escaped the error of their ways? By doing what? How could they... How could they correctly affirm Allah's attributes and still avoid causing Allah to resemble His creation? By saying what? To affirm for Allah whatever He has affirmed and whatever the Messenger has affirmed. Yeah. And? Yeah. Very more important point. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Bear in mind the important point affirming Allah's attributes, affirming for Allah whatever He affirmed for Himself and whatever the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa affirmed for Him with regard to attributes, bearing in mind, as the Shaykh said, the very great difference between the attributes of the Creator and the attributes of the creation. That the attributes of the Creator are not like the attributes of the creation. So if they only affirmed His attributes with this principle in mind, then they would avoid both evils. The evils of denying His attributes and the evils of causing Him to resemble His, or holding Him to resemble His creation. We also had the ruling on a person who hears the Qur'an and claims that it is the speech of a human. What is the ruling on a person like this? One who hears the Qur'an and, and declares that that is the speech of a human. No. He's, a, he's a kafir, an unbeliever. And the proof for that, we had also the proof for that, Shaykh al-Fawzan mentioned, he's an unbeliever. The one who states that he hears the Qur'an and states the Qur'an is the speech of a human. He is an unbeliever, and the evidence for that that we had. Also, no. Eh, eh, no. In who are called the Bashar. The man, the man who was called, Al Walid ibn Al Mughira, he heard the Quran, and at first he was amazed with it, and he, he said, "It's not poetry, it's not magic, it's not this." And 
Then his people, they said, what you're saying is it's revelation then. So then he realized and stopped and they rebuked him. So then he went back on him. He went back on himself. I said, okay, it's magic then. It's sorcery and so on. And they said that it's the speech of a human. So then Allah refuted him and stated the ayah that came from Surah Al-Muddathir. Sa'uslihi saqar. I will burn him in the hellfire. I'll burn him in the hellfire for stating that Quran is the speech of a human. We also had then finally, as a final question, the ruling on a person who declares that Allah is like his creation in any human characteristics. That Allah has human characteristics. Or that Allah's attributes are like human attributes. What is the ruling on a person like that? That Shaykh Al-Fawzan mentioned. Likewise, a kafir, an unbeliever. Then with regard to this week, then we'll take the point, the next point, point number 58, inshallah, something different. The saying of At-Tahawi, rahimahullah, وَالرُّؤْيَةُ حَقٌ لِأَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ بِغَيْرِ إِحَاطَةٍ وَلَا كَيْفِيَّةٍ And seeing Allah by the people of paradise is true without their encompassing him and without us knowing how it will be. And the ru'ya, the seeing Allah, that is, by the people of paradise is true without their encompassing him and without us knowing how it will be, without us knowing the kafir, without us knowing how that will be. And just with regard to this point, to show the importance of this point, obviously all the points are important, but just as further emphasis, then in the larger explanation of Ibn Abil Iz, Ibn Abil Iz said with regard to this point, this matter is one of the noblest matters from the principles of the religion and from the most tremendous of them and it is the limit which those people who strive strive for and those people who vie vie for in this point the seeing of Allah seeing Allah the most high on the day of resurrection and he said, And those will be deprived. Those who are screened away from their Lord, they will be truly deprived. Those who are turned away from his door. Stressing the importance of this, this matter, the ru'ya, seeing Allah on the day of resurrection. This is one of the greatest of the matters from the fundamentals of the religion and this is a great goal which people who strive strive for to attain this seeing Allah and those who are deprived of it are truly deprived in the fullest sense of the word deprived those who are screened away from seeing Allah may Allah save us from that so then Shaykh al-Fawzan said al-ru'ya the seeing means the believers seeing their Lord, the perfect and most high. In the term in the Arabic is just ar ruya the seeing. When it's used in the books of Aqidah here, like this, this term ar ruya is used with the meaning, as he said, meaning the believers seeing their Lord, the perfect and most high. Because the believers will see their Lord, the perfect and most high, in the hereafter in the hereafter they will see him openly with their eyes just as they see the moon on the night when it is full and just as they see the sun bright and clear when there is no cloud cover to hide it Just 
as the chosen prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam al mustafa just as the chosen prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed about in the authentic and mutawatir ahadith from him alayhi salatu wassalam then in a footnote they mention one of these hadith they say from they mention from from jirir ibn abdullah al bajali radiyallahu an who said kunna inda an nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam fa nadhara ila al qamari laylata yani al badr fa qal innakum satarawna rabbakum kama tarawna hadha al qamar la tudamuna fi ru'yatihi and from jarir ibn abdullah al bajali radiyallahu an who said we were with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he looked at the moon on the night when it was full and he said you will certainly see your lord just as you see this moon you will not be put to trouble in seeing him hadith reported by al bukhari as hadith 554 and by muslim And just a side point, some of the, ex- the explainers make the point, in case someone misunderstands, that this hadith affirms seeing Allah truly and really, just as we truly and really see the moon and the sun. It doesn't mean that the, the way in which, uh, that, that we, it's a description of the way in which Allah will be seen is like the way in which the moon and sun are seen. But what is being seen is like the means. Allah being seen is like the moon and sun being seen. No. Rather, that just as you truly and clearly see the sun and moon, then likewise you will truly see Allah. Then back to the point, then Shaykh of Awzan in the explanation said, continuing, And so therefore the author said, الرؤية حق The seeing is حق, is true. The seeing is true. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, meaning, it is affirmed by the book and the sunnah and the ijma'ah. The book is affirmed by the book and by the sunnah and by the consensus of the people of the sunnah and the jama'ah. From the salaf, from the pre- predecessors and from the khalaf, from the later peoples. Nobody disagrees about that except for the mubtadi'ah except for the innovators and the people of the deviant ways. At this point, we'll just mention something else that Ibn Abdul Iz mentions, as the Shaykh of Awzan said here, nobody differs about this. With regard to the believers seeing Allah on the day of resurrection, then the book proves it, the sunnah proves it, and there is ijma, total consensus of the people of the sunnah upon it. He mentioned only the deviants, the innovators, disagree. Ibn Abil Iz mentions who they are. He said, the ones who disagree and differ about seeing, they are the Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila. Yet again, the same two sects. The Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila and those who followed them from the Khawarij and the Imamiyya, I mean the Shia. <coughs> And their saying is false and futile and it is re- rejected by the book and the sunnah. <laughs> then Shaykh al-Fawzan continued with the explanation saying, So the believers will see their Lord, the perfect and most high, just as he the perfect said, وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ نَاظِرَةٌ إِلَى رَبِّهَا نَاظِرَةٌ Surah Al-Qiyamah, the 75th Surah, Ayahs 22 and 23. With the explanation that on the day of resurrection, on that day, some faces will be radiant, looking at their Lord. Shaykh Al-Fawzan said, and they are the faces 
of the believers. So he quoted the first ayah as a proof for seeing for the believers seeing Allah on the day of resurrection. <coughs> so he said the wujuh, the first ayah, wujuhun yawma idin nadira, some faces on that, on that day will be radiant, he said, they are the faces of the believers. And the second ayah, ila rabbiha nadira, looking at their Lord. Shaykh Fawzan then said, as for the word in the first ayah, nadira, the faces will be radiant. He said, meaning, from anadra, this is from radiance, which means brilliance and beauty. This is a descript- being a description of the faces of the believers. Then he gives another ayah, again describing the faces of the believers. تَعَرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ نَظْرَةَ النَّعِيمِ Suratul Mutaffifin, the 83rd Surah, Ayah 24. With the explanation, you will recognize upon their faces the radiance of bliss. So it's another ayah that mentions the radiance of the faces of the believers. Like the ayah from Surah Al-Qiyamah. Then he goes to the second part of the original ayah, Surah Al-Qiyamah, the 23rd ayah. And as for the second ayah, إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاظِرَةً Looking at their Lord, he said, As for nadira, looking, then it means looking with the eyes. Looking with the eyes. You say, نَظَرْتُ إِلَىٰ كَذَا I looked upon such and such. When you mean, I saw it. أَبْصَرْتُهُ I looked upon it, mean I saw it. Then, Sheikh Al-Fawzan makes a language point here and says, another, the term another, usually with the meaning of looking, as occurs here. He said the term another, it has different usages in the book of Allah, the mighty and majestic. And then he mentions three different usages for this term. Obviously the point, one of the points the Sheikh is making here is that some people of innovation, sometimes they try and use a word and they say it's used one certain way and they try and make it always be used that one certain way. So the Sheikh is making clear here, this word here, another looking, has different usages in the book of Allah, the mighty and majestic. And he makes three different, mentions three different usages. Firstly, if it is used with the term illa, Towards or to mean looking towards or looking to. Then it means al ma'ay al ma'ayana bil absar. It means seeing with the eyes. And he gives an example of that. Afala yam dhuruna ila al ibili kaifa khuliqat wa ila al sama kaifa rufiat. Surah al Ghashiya, the 88th surah. Ayahs 17 and 18 with the explanation will they not look upon the camels at how they have been created and at the sky and how it has been raised so in the ayah afala yanzuruna so the term nadhar is used with a illa afala yanzuruna Will they not look upon the camels at how they have been created? And at the sk- and wa ila, again the ila is used, and at the sky and how it has been raised. Shaykh al-Fawzan says it's the first usage of the, of the nadar with the meaning of looking when the term ila is used with it, when the particle ila is used. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, meaning, will they not look with their eyes? At these amazing parts of the creation which prove the power and ability of Allah the mighty and majestic. So this is the first usage of nadar, looking when the term is used with nadar and illa, looking at, looking upon. Then it means, as he said, looking with the eyes, looking and seeing. The Shaykh said that's the usage in this ayah. And in this ayah, 
ila rabbiha nazira the ayah that we're as under discussion here surah al-qiyamah ayah 23 ila rabbiha nazira looking at their lord the sheikh said using the term ila so that's the first usage of the of the nazar in the quran of looking in the quran it means looking when it's used with ila nazar ila means looking and seeing as occurs in this ayah, looking at the, looking at their Lord. Then he said, bringing the second usage, and when nazar is used on its own, without any intermediate particle, then it means halting and waiting. And then in this case, nazar, when there's no particle illa, no particle along with it, it's just nazar then it means halting and waiting. <coughs> and he gives an ayah to prove this. يَوْمَ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتُ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا انظُرُونَا نَقْتَبِسْ مِن نُورِكُمْ Surah Al-Hadid, the 57th surah, ayah 13. With the explanation, on the day when the male and female hypocrites will say to those who believe, Unduruna, wait for us, so that we can acquire some of your light. So this term is used here, Nadr is mentioned here, without any particle along with it. Unduruna, wait for us. As the Sheikh said, Unduruna means Intadiruna, wait for us. He said, they're saying this, meaning, so that we can so that we can derive some light from your light. This is what the hypocrites will say to the believers on the day of resurrection. Wait for us, so that we can derive some light from your light. Because the hypocrites, their light will be extinguished. And Allah's refuge is sought. So they will remain in darkness. So therefore they will seek from the believers to wait for them until they can take some light from their light. So this is the second usage of another in the Quran. Another with no illa along with it, no particle along with it, just another. Then it means waiting and halting. And he gives another ayah with this usage. He said, and his saying, He the Most High, هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهِ Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 210, with the explanation, Do they but await that Allah should come to them? هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ Do they but await? Again, another is used with no particle along with it, just another. يَنْظُرُونَ do they but await that Allah should come to them? Shaykh al-Fawzan said, meaning, they do not await except the coming of the Lord on the day of resurrection to carry out judgment between his slaves. So this is the second usage of another in the Quran, when it's not used with any particle along with it, just another, just the noun or the verb, another with no particle along with it. Then it means waiting and halting. Then he brings the third usage. He said, and when it is used, when nother is used with the particle fi into, then it means at tafakkur and al atibar. When nother looking is used with the term fi into, look mean looking into something. Then he said, then it carries the meaning of reflecting and considering and he gives a proof of that he said just as Allah the Most High said أَوَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا فِي مَلَكُوتِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Surah Al-A'raf the 7th Surah Ayah 185 with the explanation will they not reflect upon the dominion of the heavens and the earth Shaykh Al-Fawzan said Meaning, reflect 
upon those things created by Allah in the heavens and upon the earth. And take this as a proof for the power and ability of Allah, the Creator. He, the Perfect and Most High. And of His being deserving of all worship. So here, Shaykh Fawzan has mentioned the three different usages of nadr, looking or waiting or reflecting in the Qur'an. Just to summarize, he said, if firstly he said, if it's used with, if nadr occurs with illa, then it's taken to mean looking at, looking and seeing. Looking at something, seeing something. Secondly, if it's not used with a particle at all, it's just on its own, the verb or noun on its own, then it means waiting and halting. And thirdly, if it's used with the particle fi, looking into something, and it carries the meaning considering and reflecting. Then he says, Al Hasil. So, in summary, that another here, I mean, in the, because what's on discussion is these ayah proving that the believers will see Allah, the ayah from Surah Al Qiyamah. Ila Rabbiha Nadira. The believers will be looking at their Lord. So Shaykh al-Fawzan said, so here another is used with the particle illa, looking at, and its meaning is ar-ru'ya wal-mu'ayana, seeing and seeing with the eyes. In other words, the Shaykh is making the point here that if, if some innovator comes along and says, no, it does, another or doesn't always mean looking and seeing. It can sometimes mean waiting, or it can sometimes mean such and such. Then the Sheikh has given you the principle here. When another means looking and seeing, and when it means waiting, and when it means reflecting. Depending on which particle is used along with it, or if there's no particle along with it. And in this ayah, as we saw, the particle illa is used. It means looking and seeing. The believers will see Allah. Then he gives another ayah in the explanation as proof of this, as proof of the believers seeing Allah. He said, And he, the perfect and most high, said, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادَةً He said, He, the perfect and most high, said, The ayah from Surah Yunus, the tenth surah, ayah 26. With the rough Literal word, literal translation, or rough literal meaning, for those who did well in the world, or as Tabari put it, for those who did well in the world, there will be the finest reward, waziyada, and an increase. For those believers who did well, who worshipped Allah well in the world, then in the hereafter. There will be the finest reward for them, al husna wa ziyada, and an increase. Shaykh al Fawzan said, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself explained the term al husna, the finest, to mean paradise. And he explained al ziyada to mean looking at the honorable face of Allah. And this occurs in Sahih Muslim. In a footnote they mention, Muslim reports it as Hadith 181. Meaning in the book of Iman from Sahih Muslim. And also reported by Tirmidhi. So this is a tafsir of the tafsir of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself explained this ayah. Alhamdulillah. That the meaning of the ayah is, for those who did well, the believers who did well in the world, they will receive al-husna, they will receive paradise. Waziyada, and an increase, he said, looking at the honorable face of Allah. This is the tafsir of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the second ayah proving that the believers will see Allah. Then he gives a third ayah. He said, and he the Most High said, Lahumma yasha'una fiha. وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيد Surah Qaf, the 50th Surah, Ayah 35. With the explanation 
and usually if I, the explanations I give usually is taken from Tabari it's just what Tabari gives as explanation of the ayah so for explanation those who are dutiful to Allah will have whatever they wish in paradise and we have something extra for them Shaykh Fawzan said, Al Mazid, again this term Al Mazid, something extra. He said, it is looking at the honorable face of Allah. So it's another ayah affirming the believers will see Allah. Then the Shaykh quotes a fourth ayah in this regard. He said, And he the Most High said about the unbelievers, the kuffar. كَلَّا إِنَّهُمْ عَنْ رَبِّهِمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ لَمَحْجُوبُونَ Surah Al-Mutaffifin, the 83rd Surah, Ayah 15, with the explanation, But no, on that day, the unbelievers will be blocked and screened away from their Lord. Shaykh Al-Fawzan said, So if the unbelievers are screened away from Allah, not seeing him because they disbelieved in this world so then they will be screened and prevented from looking upon him on the day of resurrection and this is the greatest deprivation and the greatest punishment and Allah's refuge is sought Amen. so then the Shaykh makes the point obviously the question arises how is this an ayah a proof that the believers will see Allah I mentioned that the unbelievers will be blocked and screened away from seeing Allah. The question is there. How, do, how is it a proof the believers will see Allah? Shaykh al-Fawzan said, So the ayah proves that the believers will not be blocked and screened away from Allah on the day of resurrection. And that they will indeed Look upon him in the hereafter because they believed in him in this world, not having seen him. Rather, they took as proof for him, he the perfect, they took as proof for him his signs and his messages sent to his messengers. So, therefore, Allah will honor them with looking upon him. On the day of resurrection. Likewise, some of the explainers in Tafsir they mention that this ayah is indeed a proof, as like Ibn Kathir and others, they mention this ayah is a proof that the believers will see Allah because it mentions the punishment of the unbelievers. The, the, the great one of the, the greatest punishment of the unbelievers is they'll be blocked and screened away and not allowed to see Allah. So this is mentioned in the context of punishment of them. So then if the saying of the innovators was correct that the believers won't see Allah either then how will it be a punishment just for the unbelievers? It won't be a special punishment for the unbelievers it will be the same for the believers. So be no, it would be no punishment. But the ayah is mentioned in the context of punishment that they'll be punished by being blocked from seeing Allah. So the ayah is indeed as the people of the Sunnah say is indeed a proof that the believers will see Allah. Then Shaykh Al-Fawzan said one another and looking upon the face of Allah, the mighty and majestic, is the greatest bliss in paradise. This is the position of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And these are some of their proofs from the Qur'an. In the ayahs we've just had, these are just some of their proofs from the Qur'an for that. Then he moves on and said, As for their proofs from the Sunnah, then they are very many. Indeed, they reach the level of mutawatir. They reach the level of being reported by a very large number of people at every stage of transmission, from the companions, tabi'een, and every level down. He said they reach the level of being mutawatir, as was said by the great scholar Ibn al-Qayyim in his valuable book, Hadi al-Arwah ila bilad al-Afrah. And he quoted the ahadith reported about seeing Allah. I mean, seeing Allah by the believers on the day of resurrection. And that they meet, they reach the level of being mutawatir. And from them, 
Shaykh just mentions one of them. His, and from them is his saying, alayhi salatu wassalam, innakum satarawna rabbakum yawm al-qiyamah kama tarawna al-qamara laylat al-badr wa kama tarawna al-shamsa sahwan laysa dunaha sahab la tudamuna fi ru'yatihi aw la tadamuna fi ru'yatihi the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam You will certainly see your Lord on the day of resurrection Just as you see the moon on the night when it is full And just as you see the sun Bright and clear Not being covered over by clouds And he said You will not be put to trouble In seeing him or you will not have to rush and crowd together to see him. In a footnote, they mention this hadith reported by Al-Bukhari, and it's from a hadith of Abu Huraira, radiallahu an. Reported by Al-Bukhari as hadith 554, and hadith 806, and hadith 7434, and also by Muslim. And Muslim reports it with the wording, Tadaruna. You will not cause harm to anyone to see him. They explain the same meaning. You won't have to crush and rush together to see him. Everyone in their own place will be able to see Allah. As indeed Shaykh Fawzan said, he said, meaning, the last part of the hadith, لا تضامون في رؤيته You will not have to rush and crush together to see him. Shaykh Fawzan said, meaning, you will not have to scramble and crowd to see Allah the mighty and majestic Because every single one Will see the Lord Each person remaining at his place Without any crowding or scrambling Just as the people see the sun and the moon Without having to scramble and crowd And the Sheikh said Because usually If there is something upon the earth which is hidden then the people have to scramble to get to see it. However, if it is something raised up like the sun and the moon, then they do not have to crowd and scramble to see it. Everyone can see it while he still remains at his place. And if this is the case with regard to something created, the sun and the moon, then how about the Creator, the perfect and most high? Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala Muhammad. And that's the first half of the explanation of this point. Then the Shaykh carries on to mention about those sects who deny the seeing seeing Allah. So we'll leave it there for this until next time, inshaAllah. Any points of clarification? Abu Huraira, radiallahu And just with regard to the point that of the hadith, we said some the explainers make clear and the people of knowledge make clear. As for the part of hadith, that you will certainly see your Lord just as you see the sun, just as you see the moon on the night when it's full, and just as you see the sun. Then they say it's not a likening of Allah, between Allah and His creation. It's not likening Allah to His creation. It is not likening Allah to the sun and the moon, not at all. Rather, it is a likening of the people's seeing. <laughs> Just as they see the sun and the moon, then certainly they will see their Lord. It's not something metaphorical, then truly they will see their Lord. Not metaphorically see Him. They will truly and really see Him. Just as they truly and really see the sun and the moon. But it's not a likening of the Creator to something from His creation, the sun and the moon. It doesn't mean He is like the sun or like the moon. Not at all. People of the Sunnah make that point in explanation just in case someone misunderstands that.
uh, brother Jazahallahu Khairan, he just he's got the bigger sharh open here, Jazahallahu Khairan. He mentions the, in the sharh of Ibn Abil Aiz, obviously as we mentioned when we began the book, the most famous and the most excellent of explanations of the book is the one of is mentioned as being the one of Ibn Abil Aiz. And that's one that, the one that Shaykh al-Albani and others, Rahimahullah, of others from the scholars have praised this explanation. And it's well, Shaykh, al- Shaykh al-Fawzan, obviously he took points from there and took, made an abridgment, took points from it. So in that explanation of Ibn Amr al-Iz, he mentioned with regard to the ayah from Surah Al-Mutaffifin, كَلَّا إِنَّهُمْ عَنْ رَبِّهِمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ لَمَحْجُوبُونَ That by, by no means... They, the unbelievers, on that day, will not have what they cl- what they claim that they'll have a great station with Allah. They will not have what they claim. Rather, on that day, they will be blocked and screened away from seeing their Lord. Then Ibn Abi Al-Iz mentions the saying of Imam, Imam Shafi'i about the ayah. He said that when those people, I mean the unbelievers, are screened away from him, being under his anger then this is a proof that his beloved servants will see him being in being under his pleasure his rida Allah is, has sakht Allah has anger upon the unbelievers and screens them away from seeing him then likewise as Imam Shafi'i said here this is a proof that as for his beloved servants they will see him <coughs> Him being having rida, having pleasure with him, him being pleased with them. Yani <laughs> 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 نادرة النظرة هذا أثر عن ابن مردوي بسنده إلى ابن عم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تعالى وجوه يومئذ ناظرة قال إلى البهاء والحسن وهذا الأثر بعثه الشيخ ناصر في لا الله لكن الشيخ فوزان ما ذكر له كأثر أو شيء لغة يعني أه. أه. لا لا جزاك الله خير لغة يعني في اللغة فقط Jazakallah khair. Wa subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.